Hey guys, welcome back to the History Channel. Ty here is here. I hope you had a fantastic week. Well, no, this getup does not mean that I'm moving into the podcasting. Or maybe. Well, actually, this getup is inspired by a protagonist, the person, the legend, the man himself, Joe Rogan, and the fact that he just sold his podcast to Spotify for 100 plus million dollars reportedly. And well, I think there are a few lessons for us to learn as business owners, individual just entrepreneurs and creators, as well as there are a few interesting observations to be made about the Spotify strategy. So without further ado, let's do this. <laughs> the Joe Rogan experience. And as always, if you'd like to learn more inspirational stories, for example, about the person who was a dishwasher and all of a sudden turned into the internationally acclaimed singer-songwriter, or maybe you would like to argue with me whether Kevin Hart is a good or bad role model, well, here is a playlist for you, click on that, or there'll be a card at the end of this video and check out the rest of the playlist. I bet you've heard about Joe Rogan before. Well, I've used footage from his podcast on this channel multiple times in the past, as well as he's a color commentator for UFC for like forever. And just in general, his podcast is famous for being that lengthy, a little bit of an unstructured beast that also sometimes brings uh, some controversial figures to that podcast for three hour long discussion about some nonsense. Well, I would like to put all of this aside. I would like to move all the preconceived notions, whether they're good or bad about Joe Rogan and Joe Rogan experience as a podcast, and specifically focus on the implications of the past few days. First, let's start with the Joe Rogan experience podcast itself. Well, we're talking about not just a simple, you know, audio experience for predominantly male individuals between probably 16 and 45. No, we're talking about the largest podcast in the world. 190 million people listen to that podcast every day, five days a week, sometimes on Saturdays as well for special MMA shows. Pause. 190 million people have Joe Rogan podcast as part of their daily routine. This is mind blowing. And you would think that the podcast like this has probably the primetime TV show level of production value. Nope. They have custom made table, a bunch of different guests coming in and out, some paintings and some trinkets on a table and occasional substances that find their way to that, albeit custom made table. Legal. Okay. How does that work? Do people get upset at you if you do certain things? There's uh, tobacco and marijuana in there. That's all it is. And there's no structured format either. Joe Rogan and a couple of his producers either talk to each other or talk to various guests that come in and out for one to three hours. Any topic, any discussion goes, any kind of language can be used. They just go at it and they go through the discussion and then they just wrap it up. That's it. That's as much of a podcast as you get. You can find it in several different formats, primarily I and Obviously, you go to Apple iTunes. Beyond that, any other podcast platforms, now Spotify, I guess, and as well as I'll drop the links to those sources and I'll also drop the links to their YouTube channels. They have the primary channel where they post the full length interviews and they also have the secondary channel, GRE Clips, where they post smaller segments that are a little bit more viral, you know, easier to share. Smart, smart decision, guys, uh, on YouTube. And both of those sources of video, plus multiple sources of audio, deliver the content to the audience of 190 million people globally. How did this show make it from the small, almost like individually produced thing between a couple of friends to major global dominance in the podcast space to now being sold to a major podcast po company for nine digits? Well, we're about to find out. <laughs> the Joe Rogan experience. Time to learn from a couple of very specific lessons. We'll start with Joe Rogan lesson, then we will come back to Spotify, so stick with me on this one. The important lesson from Joe Rogan's example to me is the consistency. And yes, I know Tahir is again on the pony of consistency and shipping it, but man, let's face the facts. Joe Rogan started exploring the media. He started exploring the video format of just sit down and talk conversational shows down to the actual podcast back in like 2003, 2005. So beginning of 2000s when he started this. Then for 10 years before 2012, 2013, when he converted the show into more like what we see today as a Joe Rogan experience. And for almost another 10 years after, Joe Rogan just been at it. A rotating group of guests coming in, the MMA stars, the comedians, just his friends, book authors, as I saw, some extreme people with extreme views, let's put it that way. Some other people with controversial and extreme views. All of those people coming in and out, different studios, slightly different formats, fight companions, 
all of that was just the diversity that he brought in with that consistency to keep people engaged, to keep them interested in coming back and listening to that show for two to three hours a day for five days straight. This is just amazing. The fact that both the work ethic and dedication that it took to make it through almost 20 years of combined media production experience. I have a friend, a person who I work right now, who outright told me that Joe Rogan experience is part of his daily routine. That's it. And this is also part of the daily routine of 190 other million people who listen to his podcast monthly. And this is to me proof. This is the proof of that topic of my pony, so to speak, pony topic. I don't know how you correctly refer to it. Essentially, one of my favorite topics about consistency and delivering your product over and over again and being dedicated to the actual execution, because this is awesome. The fact that people are engaged. It's great that he has interesting guests and interesting topics. And sometimes things go viral depending on which CEO of which company smokes what kind of chemical on your show. It's also about the fact that Joe Rogan and his team, they did not go to a media school. They did not learn all the audio and video production just somewhere in some major college or major film school. They learned it on the job. They had to figure out things one after the other. They have to figure out how to record. They had to figure out how to live stream. They had to figure out how to live stream quality content. And that evolved over the years. I appreciate that because this channel is my proof of that. I did not learn. I did not go to any special classes. I became better at this and video production by just doing it for the past almost three years now, 150 weeks, 150 videos straight every single week. I keep going at it. And this helped me to become better because those incremental changes helped me improve. And those incremental changes is what you should be focused on. It doesn't matter whether you are in media as well. Maybe you have your own small business. Maybe you have your arts and crafts thing, or maybe you're just, I don't know, making marble statues and you just happen to click on this video. I wouldn't know why, but I really appreciate it. In any case, that consistent execution, the consistency and real resilience in that approach is what can help you arrive from maybe a smaller business format where you are today to bringing the same amount of value, the same amount of economic impact that Joe Rogan has with his podcast. <laughs> the Joe Rogan experience. Now onto Spotify. This is where it gets really interesting. What do you associate the word Spotify with? Color green, music streaming service, annoying ads or annoying limit on the number of skips that you have every week or every day? Well, yes, possibly, but also podcasts, video, probably not as much 12 to 18 months ago, but definitely more as the time progresses. Almost overnight, Spotify did the amazing move by just announcing themselves on the scene of the podcasting when they acquired multiple different companies. They've acquired some companies to deliver and bring the content onto their platform exclusively. They also acquired company like Anchor to create an easy way for other creators like myself and potentially like yourself to produce the podcast almost on the spot using your phone and a single free app. Fun fact, by the way, about Anchor, a couple of months before the announcement of the acquisition, position by Spotify, I was interviewing for a chief of staff position with their CEO. Yeah, I'd like to think <laughs> that the interview and the entire process was derailed by the pending acquisition, but it could also have been that I thought the interviews went amazing, but then those guys were sitting there and be like, nah, we can do much better. Anyway, back to Spotify. What I think the acquisitions that we spoke about gave Spotify was the content to bring the listeners in and also the tools for the creators to create more content. And as those people come in, give them something more to listen to and create this like positive feedback loop. So the few days ago when Joe Rogan went live to make his announcement, it only made sense. And it was the seismic move, but seismic move in the Spotify's direction. I have an announcement. The podcast is moving to Spotify. I signed a multi-year licensing agreement with Spotify that will start on September 1st. Starting on September 1st, the entire JRE library will be available on Spotify as well as all the other platforms. Then somewhere around the end of the year, it will become exclusive to Spotify, including the video version of the podcast. Content is king. And Spotify stock fully realized that because on the day of the announcement by Joe Rogan, Spotify stock price jumped 7%. With their current market cap as of today, 7% is roughly two plus billion dollars. So they paid someone or whatever the contractual terms are, but they acquired the 
podcast for 100 plus million dollars and their value jumped by 2 billion dollars plus. What kind of math is that? Capitalism. This math is called capitalism. Sorry, Carl. Okay, jokes aside, and with all the feelings aside that I have about sometimes public markets, what investors realized was the fact that it's not only about the podcast itself and all the thousands and thousands of episodes that Joe Rogan will bring with him. It is about the audience and the content. The content is king. The audience is what will drive the future revenues. Because imagine the situation. Joe Rogan will bring, as of the time when the Spotify fully and exclusively owns his content, Joe Rogan Experience will bring 190 million of the viewers or almost that amount of viewers. Those are the people who will have to download the app who will get served the ads while they're looking for the podcast, who will potentially be served additional ads while they're listening to the podcast, and whose behavioral information, the data around what kind of other things they listen to, because let's face it, they're on the app, they open it, they finish listening to the Joe Rogan podcast, they probably will see some other recommendations, so they'll click on it. So all of that economic value will be multitude of times bigger than that $100 million that Spotify had to shell out to Joe Rogan. And the behavioral information is very interesting one, because data as the content, it brings a lot of additional revenue potentials. In this case, by knowing this audience, Spotify will be able to charge higher premiums on that demographic because those advertisers who know the kind of demographic Joe Rogan brings, they would want to advertise on him and Spotify will be able to create a bidding war around it. So more revenues and more potential gains for Spotify. And what I'm talking about all the additional benefits like improvement of the experience, the word of mouth, all the auxiliary tangible things that might still happen as those people come onto the platform. <laughs> The Joe Rogan experience. The key thing is that if you're a creator, if you're a business owner, if you're an entrepreneur, you should be really paying attention to this move. You should really, if you just missed a couple of parts, rewind for the past few minutes, listen to it over again, because this is the important things. Final and the very curious and particular detail that Joe Rogan mentioned is that he's also taking all of his video recordings from YouTube and he's bringing them to the Spotify itself. I feel like a lot of people actually ignore that fact. They primarily and purely focus on the podcast side, but with this move, I also read into it as a Spotify are not outright declining the fact that they might entertain the idea of creating the video platform as well. The revenue potential is there. I mean, we have the proof, just look around. No, don't look around my room. Look around your browser or around your app, YouTube. This place generates billions upon billions of revenue for Google. And Google literally just monopolized the entire video posting, video streaming, I guess, area for creators like myself by fully leveraging YouTube. YouTube is that behemoth in the space. So the idea of the fact that the Spotify by grabbing some of those content creators over to their platform might overnight the same way as they turn to the podcast platform, enter the video platform, that will get super interesting. Let's face it, they are bringing hundreds of millions of people just with Joe Rogan alone onto their platform. They're serving them the audio, they're serving them the video, they will serve them other content that they're gonna be creating. They have Anchor and the platform that already has this DNA of easy life for the creators, making it easy for creators to deliver content to their viewers and their listeners. This is Spotify amassing this like bonfire of small individual contributions, the content, the tools, things like Joe Rogan experience and major podcasts might eventually become just this match that lits up this entire bonfire. And all of a sudden, instead of just regular streaming music service from Sweden, we have this new competitor who is going after Apple iTunes, for their music and their podcast content and after likes of YouTube for the video. The world will be a very interesting and a different place for the media creators and the business owners in 6 to 12 months if things are moving in the direction that I think they are. <laughs> the Joe Rogan Experience Have you heard about Joe Rogan Experience? Are you a Spotify user? And do you agree the implications of Joe Rogan Experience moving from Apple and all the other platforms and from YouTube over to Spotify have far more reaching implications than what we're thinking right now. Share your thoughts and ideas in the section below. To summarize at the end of this week, 
Joe Rogan, he taught us that consistency and resiliency in your approach will help you deliver that great economic value to both others and yourself. In this case, nine digit kind of value. As for Spotify, we quickly learned that it is like a chess game. You have to think about a couple of steps ahead and not just focus on that individual investment or that individual podcast. After all, with all the issues that YouTube is facing, the sometimes I would say unfair censorship or over censorship, the monetization issues, the apocalypses of the world, the fact that the platform is getting oversaturated and it's getting harder and harder for you to get noticed. A young, hungry media company that is willing to invest into their creators, that has a good set of tools and continues to involve the tools to support their creators over time. It captures my attention, both as a business owner, as just person who's interested in media in technology and also as a creator. And who knows, in a little bit of time, I might be willing to explore trading the white and red for black and green, or at least I'll definitely have my fair shot at both. Thank you very much guys for stopping by. If you're new to this channel, go ahead, hit the subscribe button and check out the videos in the back log. And if you're already a subscriber, thank you very much for stopping by. As always, let me know in the comment section below what you thought about this video. And I will see you all next Saturday, 10 a.m. Eastern on this very channel. No, seriously, I'm really excited about this move. I mean, first of all, I'm happy for Joe. I think he's a hardworking dude. He's a stand-up comedian who's been at it for a while and he deserves the payout. And let's face it, He's been rewarded for it quite handsomely over time. It's just now underlines the whole consistency, resiliency approach. And I think it's great for us, young businessmen, entrepreneurs, media creators, because this blows up the market wide open. And I hope YouTube is paying attention and they're going to get better at it. Apple Podcasts will get better at it. And Spotify will continue pushing them hard every single day. It will be fun. It will be an interesting time for all of us. And I'm and it gets me thinking this is not the last time we're talking about this situation and about Spotify. I'll see you in the next one. Peace.